This is a demonstration on how to throw off the hump. Throwing off the hump is a great technique for making small objects. I use it a lot for making small test pieces. Here's a little bowl that I made. And when you throw it off the hump, you leave a lot of clay down here and end up trimming it later. There's the bowl. And it's great for designing because you can explore different shapes and sizes without too much investment. So here's a thicker lip on this one. Here's a triangular lip on this one. Here's one that's been faceted with a spring and distorted. And you're not limited to just doing bowls off the hump. You can throw anything off the hump that's you know relatively small. I've thrown large things off the hump and it's done around the world, but generally most potters will use it for producing small items. Uh, little bottles are fantastic to throw off the hump. And it's a great way to explore ideas and surface techniques without a huge commitment. So let me show you how to do this. You need the basics, of course, and you will need a piece of string. Now don't get a thick string. Here's a, a string that's way too thick. You know, if you use this, it will probably not only cut the uh, piece off, it'll make it end up on the floor. You want something that's pretty fine. So you can see the difference in the thickness. You want to use the string and not the cutting wire. Cutting wire is a wire. So a wire on the throwing off the hump, you need to put it around the bottom and then pull and it kinks the wire. So, and you don't want a kinked wire. When you do that with a string, there's no kinking at all. So you can use this over and over and over again. I use a fishing line. It's about a six to 30 pound fishing line and I got it in bright yellow so that way I can see it. So get a, as big a piece of clay as you can handle. So I usually put like 25 pounds of clay down. This is probably about three or four pounds. And you can, if you want to go larger, and you can't center larger, you can put two pieces together and center the two pieces. So let me start with this one. So it starts off the same way. And when you have a larger piece, the slap centering really, really helps. So you just go ahead and slap it into the center. Seal the bottom. Get it wet. And pushing down to begin with. Then I'm going to push towards the center, starting down at the base. So I'm pushing down here to begin with, and then moving my hands up. And the clay moves up, and the pressure is actually tilting the piece over. And when you let go, let go gradually, and it goes back on the center. Once you have it up, bring it back down. Again, the pressure is with this part of the hand. I'm starting at the top, I'm working down, and I'm pushing in, elbow into your body. This hand is on the left side, holding really still. So when the clay comes out, it stops here. Now, when you're throwing off the hump, you don't really need to worry about that outside edge because you're going to be throwing off the top of the piece of clay. Now, if you want to use more clay, and this goes if you, you know, want to throw a larger piece and you're having trouble centering a big piece of clay, what you can do is center as much as you can, take this and scrape all that slurry off the surface. 
So I took a metal rib, bent it, and just went over it and got rid of that slip. Now you take another piece, and you can keep going with this. Make sure the bottom is rounded. And pretty smooth. You don't want to trap air. And then put it on top of the first piece. First piece is centered. Now I just need to center this. Slap center it on there. Just a couple bangs down to get it stuck. Now all of a sudden, instead of four pounds, I have eight pounds centered. Work the two pieces together, cone it up, bring it down. And remember, the faster the wheel's going, the faster you can move. If the wheel's going slowly, you have to stay there for at least Someone actually said 16 revolutions. I don't know how they counted that, but that's how long you have to hold your hand still until you move. So if the wheel's going faster, you can move at a more natural pace. Now, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to grab a piece of clay on the top and cone it up. Now, when you're making pots on the wheel head. It's pretty easy to make things a similar size if you weigh the pieces of clay. So use the same amount of clay, you'll get a similar size piece. When you're throwing off the hump, how do you determine how large a piece it's going to be? Well, you can use your fingers. So you can use all four fingers, make a groove, and it's going to be that, that much clay. You do that every time, you'll have a similar piece. You can also use your knuckles. So, you know, I can go four fingers, there's three fingers, or two fingers, or just one finger. So I've got all those options. The next thing you could do is determine how tall that lump of clay is going to be. So you can use your fingers your fingers again, except this time you're going to use your knuckles. So you could have your fingertips touching and you get a piece this big. You go one knuckle in, so this finger on this knuckle, it's just a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller. And if you repeat that, every time you grab a piece of clay to make a piece off the hump, you'll have a similar amount of clay all the way down to there. So I'm going to go one finger and right to that knuckle that and then I'm gonna pinch that one finger in and get a little ball of clay on the top now these I want you to do just small pieces it's a good exercise to warm up if you haven't thrown all summer you know you've got a chance to really get back into throwing with this so that's my ball of clay now you Throw it the same way you normally do. Once it's centered, open it. Add a little water. Make the bottom. Okay. Now, it's still thick. The bottom is soft. When you throw a piece of clay on the wheel head, that's hard. It's going to compress the clay, compact it, so the bottom will be strong and won't crack. When you're throwing off the hump, you have no hard surface to throw against. You're throwing against the soft clay. So what you want to do is make sure you come back in when it's low like this, and you can reach the bottom, take your finger, and go over it to the center, and compress and compact that clay into the center. After it's leather hard and you go to trim it, do the same on the other side after trimming, and that'll keep it from cracking. Sometimes those cracks don't show until after the glaze firing, and it can get frustrating. 
So a little extra time here makes all the difference. Now before I raise the walls, I have to go, well, where's the bottom? It's easy on the wheel head. You know, if that tells me that's where the bottom of the amount of clay is. On here, I have no idea, and it's very easy to cut through the bottom of your pot. So first of all, just put your finger here, right where it's at the bottom. So the top of your finger is at the bottom of the pot, and then the bottom of your fingertip will be where you trim it, where you cut it off. So I just make a little groove with my finger, and then I'll take my fingernail and make a, make a line. So that's where I'll cut off. That'll be the foot. Now you finish throwing the pot. I'll wet it. And lift it up. I'm just going to make a little bowl here. Sometimes when I'm doing test glazes, I like to leave big throwing lines, and then it really shows that thick and thin. But now's the time to finish it. If you want to use a rib, take the rib, rest your hand on the outside, and smooth and compress that inside. Remember, you always make your pots from the inside out. The inside is just as important. It's like people, just as important as the outside. And it should echo what you want that outside to look like. You're not going to be trimming on the inside. You're going to be trimming on the outside. So get that inside so it's just the way you want that outside to look. So I took the chamois, chamoised the lip, compressed that. Here's the bottom of the bowl. Here's where the foot's going to be. And just to emphasize it, I'm going to use the stick and sponge and put a little groove there. And what I'm doing is I'm putting the sponge on the bottom of the piece and the stick. So I've got a groove there. Now, how do I get this off the wheel? Okay. Normally, you'd use your wire. You'd wire it off. So you've got the wire, hold it really tight against the bottom of the wheel and you pull it through and you get a nice flat bottom. Problem with doing it off the hump like this is you don't have that hard wheel head that's flat to hold the wire against. So often, sometimes you can do it, but usually what happens is your hands will go up and the bottom's not going to be flat. It'll be tilted. So you want to Try not to use the wire. Also, you don't want to use the wire the way I'm going to show you how to use the string. Because the wire, if you bend it or cross it over, it'll stay bent. It'll kink. And then you'll always have that kink in your wire. String doesn't do that. Now, once you get good at this, you can keep the wheel moving. You just get the string on there into that groove. Let the string travel all the way around. Hold on tight, and once it crosses over, you pull the string away. Now the clay is soft at the top, thicker at the bottom, thinner at the top. So a couple piece signs upside down. Pick a piece up off the top. So now I can just start again, grab another piece of clay, open it up, compress, compress, compress. Try not to leave any water down there too. Now, after the first pull, put your fingers so the top of your finger is at the bottom of the pot on the inside, and make that little groove. At the bottom of your finger, 
make a mark. That's where I'll cut it off. Wet it. Throw the pot. Make sure you've compressed. Compress, compress, compress. Rib a little bit. Chamois the lip. Something I like to do that looks great when the glaze changes color depending on the thickness is put a little swirl. So you put your finger in the middle and move your finger faster than the wheel. It puts a little spiral into the piece. Okay. So now I'm going to define where the bottom of the pot's going to be. Right there. Put the string in there. Let it go all the way around until it crosses over. So it's crossed over now, just like tying your shoes. And pull. And you can do this while it's moving. It's a little more difficult, but with time, do it. Pick it up. And make another, and another, and another. And remember, play with shape, play with size, play with changing it around. Have some fun with it. Now, to practice, what you can do is, before you make a pot, just make a little groove where you want to cut it off. Put the string in the groove, cross it over, and if you don't want to do it while it's moving, just cross it over, grab both ends, and pull. And it cuts it off nice and cleanly. Okay, thank you very much. And I will be using, now, you can make your hump on a bat. Cover it up and use it again another day. Or I'll be able to, sh I'll show you how to trim those bowls off the hump. So thank you. Can't wait to see what you make with this.